Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is the second Punic War, or simplified part one. Yeah, it's been like what two years since all simplified posted the first Punic War, and yeah, obviously the second Punic War was up. Yeah, I didn't know he was like gonna put the second Punic War or some other thing, and then second Punic War in the future. But I'm glad that he's just like continuing it. So we'll see Hannibal in here, right? Hamilcar, his father, and things like that. Yeah, I do have general knowledge general knowledge of anything around this because of like some history of civilist video obviously door hat is like parody style videos yeah some of my knowledge might be like uh, you know uh, biased because of uh, you know door hat is videos but yeah obviously like i know that rome won right and i know hannibal was crazy really crazy insanely crazy he did all the shit got infections right and still like yeah he just keep kept going, right? Especially when he crossed the Alps and everything. So this is going to be very interesting how or Simplified will portray Hannibal compared to like your Roman counterparts, right? So let's watch this one. Yeah. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. So that way I know which type of videos to react tomorrow. If you haven't seen my other or Simplified reactions and things like that, check out the link in the description. And yeah, let's watch it. Click the link below and get an exclusive deal with four extra months. Also, check out the merch store for some new character pins, the last remaining bucket plushies, and even a calendar. And I'm not done yet. We've partnered with u to bring you an exclusive oversimplified Roman console figure. Get it while you can at oversimplified.u2s.com. But it's limited edition, so once it's gone, it's gone. So go and buy it now. Hey! What are you still doing here? I said go and buy it now! All right, our beloved mercenaries. Let's go. hear it. <laughs> okay. Thank you one and all for your hard work fighting in the first Punic War. Would have been nice if you'd won. Maybe tried a little harder. But this isn't the finger pointing convention. I know you all have one thing on your minds. Hey! When are we all getting paid? You're not. It's a precious day. Remember you lost your... Okay. Jim, why don't you tell them? I'm not telling them. You tell them. Ugh. Look, you're not getting paid. What? We lost the first Punic War and owed the Romans a ton of reparations. Of course we can't pay you in full. Let's burn this place to the ground! Hey! hey. Don't burn this place to the ground. Come on, fellas. Will killing us really make you feel better about yeah. your money? Yes. <laughs> Way to go, sir. Shut up, Jim. You're fired. I guess that makes two of us. Huh? <laughs> Holy shit, that's dark. In the aftermath of the First Punic War, Carthage's disgruntled mercenaries, left unpaid for all their hard work, revolted, and Carthage found itself caught up in an extremely destructive mercenary war. The panicked Carthaginians hired more mercenaries to fight the mercenaries they couldn't afford to pay, and Carthage came dangerously close to collapse. All the while, across the water, there was Rome. Ha! Look at those morons. We just kicked their ass in the first Punic War, and now Bust. their own mercenaries are revolting. <laughs> yeah. Wait, first Punic War? <laughs> Do you mean there's going to be a second one? Well, we're definitely taking advantage of this situation. So almost certainly, yes. Oh, okay. The Romans did, in fact, take advantage of this situation. Amongst the chaos, rebels on the Carthaginian island of Sardinia sent out... Yeah, he would have said, like, what else are we going to do, right? It's boring here. There's nothing to do around. War is the only thing. Right? Of course, there's going to be second one. A cry for help to Rome. <laughs> Hot diggity dog, said the Romans. That's free real estate. And so in, they went. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's our island. Get the hell off. Hey, they requested our help. We're simply helping. Oh, no, you don't. Look, we're sending our own army to deal with the rebels, okay? But just to be clear, we're not trying to start a fight with you, so... You know, don't declare war on us or anything. War! <laughs> we surrender! Great. And as part of the peace treaty, we get to keep these islands. What did no! that happen? The Carthaginians were hopping... All of this. That, so that happened, right? After the first Punic War, they tried to do that. They're like, okay, we've declared war again. Obviously, like, they're going to be like, oh, wait a minute, we don't war. So there you go. Give it to Romans. So Romans were really a bully by after the first Punic War. Is that it? 
You lost, what are you gonna do now? Being mad. As if their humiliating loss in the First Punic War wasn't bad enough, the Romans now took advantage of their mercenary problem and stole their islands. This shocking land grab was pretty hard to justify, even by Roman standards. Additionally, the Romans now demanded Carthage pay them even more money on top of what was already owed. If Rome was trying to make Carthage as mad as possible, they were doing a fantastic job. The seeds of a second Punic War were being sown, and they were There's being watered for that. with Carthaginian tears. Resentment in Carthage only continued to grow. Eventually, Carthage solved their mercenary problem thanks to Carthaginian military genius and hero of the First Punic War, Hamilcar Barca. There you go. He sorted those naughty mercenaries out with some good old-fashioned atrocities, and the destructive mercenary war was over. Still, all was not well in Carthage. Mere decades ago, they were the top dogs in the Western Mediterranean. Now, after the crushing defeat in the First Punic War and a huge bill to pay the Romans, Carthage was well and truly under Rome's thumb. <laughs> what on earth were they supposed to do? If they wanted any chance at regaining their former strength, there was one thing they needed now more than anything. Money. But as long as they owed Rome a bazillion dollars... Yeah, if the history tells us anything, like, whenever you're in this kind of condition where, like, walls are closing in, only thing you can do is, like, try to conquer shit, which I'm guessing they're gonna try here, right? Imagine, like, you know, Carthaginians are badass, you know, look at how they, like, fend off all the mercenaries. Imagine if, like, they used the Roman strategy of developing their own military rather than like relying on mercenaries there could have been a real proper opposition against the romans right history would have been really different obviously even in the second punic war romans romans are going to win but imagine like if you know hamilcar before them it just like military was military had history and like experience and stronger rather than just relying on mercenaries dollars there was nothing they could do fortunately for them amongst their ranks there was one big hunk of a man with one big clump of a brain. Hamilcar. Me! Hamilcar Barca! Yes! Wait, why do you all have the exact same voice? Ah, I have it too! That's right. Hero of the First Punic War. Greatest general alive. Because this, vi this video is from perspective of some Roman. To them all, all of them sound the same, I guess. And the poster above my bed. Hamilcar Barca had an idea. All right. We need money? Well, I've got one word for you. Spain. An area filled with lucrative silver mines from which the silver would flow like a river and our pockets would be stuffed like Tony's mother at a buffet. Hey, so here's my proposal. What the hell? You send me with an army to Spain. I'll expand our territory, get those silver mines up and running, and we'll be able to pay the Romans back in no time. Okay, but just to check, you're not secretly raising the money to go on a bloodthirsty revenge spree against Rome, are you? Because oh, we no. can't afford that. Hanno, my dear, I'm simply going to pay them back. Payback. Well, that wasn't reassuring. Few in Carthage were as bitter about their loss in the First Punic War as Hamilcar Barca. 98% of his brain matter had been reallocated to thoughts of revenge. He was also fed up with the Carthaginian politicians for what he deemed a cowardly betrayal when they surrendered at the end of the last war. And so for Hamilcar, going to Spain meant being able to act independently from the weak Carthaginian government, building his own strength, and then perhaps somewhere down the line, revenge. However, he wasn't going to Spain by himself. Hannibal? Yes, father? Would you like to come with me to build an empire in Spain? Oh boy, would I! Barbara, mind if I take our nine-year-old son with me? I want to implant an intense hatred of Rome in him and prepare him for a glorious campaign of vengeance. <sighs> Just try not to traumatize him, dear. No promises. The young boy Hannibal. Yeah, Hannibal. This is so insane, right? Like, I'm... Uh, Hamilcar is probably the first guy in that whole area, let's just say. Who basically realized that all these politicians are shit. Because, I mean, this is like 200 BC, right? 200 BC. So soon, I guess, Julius Caesar, after a few centuries, is gonna realize the same shit. And will create Roman <laughs> Roman Empire. But yeah, they were also, like, tiptoeing in uh, Republic, right? Uh, like, uh, what is what, what is not. They're still tiptoeing there. You know, finding loopholes and things. So Romans are already, like, sick of all those, like, you know, senators or whatever, right? 
they are politicians so if uh, Carthage had like a, like I said stronger military rather than relying on mercenaries uh, they could have won against Romans right because there would be no Roman Empire in the future if they defeated Rome which is like I'm, I'm I guess it was like a too big of a feat even around this time like how they're gonna destroy whole Rome that's not gonna happen but if they had succeeded if Hannibal wasn't let's just say Hannibal was a genius and also an idiot sometimes that like crossing of the Alps was insanity especially taking elephants and things would accompany his father. Watching, learning. Boy, you see that city over there? Yes, father? That is Rome. You can't you know see it from there. The <laughs> no, father. We hate them, Hannibal. We hate them with every fiber of our being. But why, father? Can't I just play? <laughs> what is this? Less LOD in video game setting? You can only see city, but everything around is like empty? Okay. With my Digimons? <laughs> no, son. This is they Skyrim. Took everything from us. <laughs> our land, our wealth, our pride. Those animals. I'll tear them limb from limb. I'll burn their pathetic city to the ground. Dad? <laughs> I'm sorry, son. I've, I've just never been so proud. Keep going. I'll slaughter their people. <laughs> I'll cut off their faces and wear them as masks. <laughs> After taking Hannibal to the <laughs> Temple of Baal and having him swear an oath never to be a friend of Rome, off dad and son went for their lovely beach holiday in Spain. But Spain was already inhabited by many tribes people. And when Hamilcar suddenly showed up in their territory, they were like, Hey, who the hell are you? What are you doing here? I'm teaching my son how to become a warrior like me. Aw, well that's sweet. Well then, little guy, let's see what you got. <gasps> Good boy. As Hamilcar got to work fighting the tribes of Iberia and expanding Carthaginian influence, Hannibal became a child of war, even earning battle scars from a young age. And he grew to become a great military leader himself, making his father very proud. I love you so much, son. Dad, not in front of the enemy. <laughs> you killed that guy so well, son. The Barkas successfully consolidated <laughs> Carthaginian power, got those silver mines up and running, and were sending buckets of cash back to a money-starved Carthage. And symbolizing Carthage's regrowing strength, a beautiful new city would eventually be founded in Spain. New Carthage, with a magnificent palace at its center. <laughs> what Carthage is, that is even doing? back, baby! <laughs> what in the name of Apollo is going on here? Romans! Flowing silver mines? Dancing elephants? What are you up to, Hamilcar? I'm simply gathering the money to pay you back. Oh. Well, okay then. Or are you rebuilding strength to go on a bloodthirsty revenge spree? Like I said, Claudius, I'm simply trying to pay you back. Aw. You guys are hugging. <laughs> no, we're not! I was. I was hugging. <laughs> Hamilcar had practically carved out a kingdom for himself in Spain, free from the meddling Carthaginian politicians. Mm. His power was becoming immense. <laughs> but one thing I realized about like Roman Empire, basically, most of the Roman Empire, like politicians are the biggest piece of shit, backstabbing piece of shit. Rome would have been even more stronger if constantly their chads weren't getting killed by left and right by all the like politicians and even like their own guard. Right, Praetorians, there you go, the purple wherein, right? So, I'm surprised that Carthaginian politicians, let's just say, didn't like, wait a minute, Hamilcar's getting a bit too powerful, and didn't try to do something because of it, right? I'm guessing they were like so rock bottom that they realized like whatever Hamilcar is sending is the only thing we're surviving, so I guess even if he's becoming power, like, what's the alternative? Just let him do his thing, kind of way, I guess. But dad, yes, my son? I'm confused. Are we really simply paying the Romans back? We're not going to go on a bloodthirsty revenge spree? Of course we are. I'm just saying that to get the Romans off our backs. Listen, here's the most important life lesson I have for you. Vengeance is everything. An all-encompassing thirst for vengeance is great for your mental health. Are you still confused? No, no, I get it now. But what if the Romans find out what we're up to? They won't find out. Why? Well, look, man. I know he said it as a joke, but imagine this like 200 BC. I can't imagine many things you can do in 200 BC, right? Even in today's world, we have a lot of shit to do. 
people sometimes get depressed because they don't have much things to do. That's why people constantly play video games. Imagine 200 BC where you don't have much to do. You're a special at high level guy like that, right? Uh, with ambitions and your mind just creative, want to do something. And it's just like, what, you're going to farm? What you going to do, right? So bloodthirsty vengeance is the thing that you can focus on. It can make you stronger. It can make you do things like grow your military, grow your resources. It's a goal to have. So technically, it is better for your health rather than not having something to do, getting bored. Because that will lead to depression, I guess. Well, Hannibal, <laughs> because I use Nord VPN. Oh, God. I'm confused again. Do you like your computer being hacked, all your passwords being stolen, and used to create a fake virtual you who drains your mom's bank account? Me neither. And that's why I use NordVPN. These days, hackers are only getting smarter, while you're only getting dumber. Whether it's convincing phishing attacks, fake Wi-Fi networks, or clicking your aunt's Facebook post that opens the door to a hacker party on your device, you need to protect yourself from online threats with NordVPN. NordVPN allows you to connect to secure servers that encrypt your data and keeps you safe by blocking malicious websites with their threat protection feature. With NordVPN, you can also connect to other territories and take advantage of better deals or content not available in your country. And if you don't like it, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So go to nordvpn.com slash oversimplified to get an exclusive deal with a huge discount and four extra months. That's nordvpn.com. Yes, easily, man. Them blocking Hitler video of him just became a great advertising poster for him because they know NordVPN is going to sponsor this video and he can say that every single time. Slash oversimplified. And as always, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Carthaginian Tears, a child of war and the Carthaginian conquest of Spain. The Carthaginian recovery had been staggeringly quick and Rome was seriously alarmed. But they were also preoccupied with ongoing wars elsewhere, including an expansionist war to the north where they were enslaving thousands of northern Celts. So for now, to keep Carthage in check, the Romans insisted on a new treaty. See this river. The two sides agreed that everything above it was in Rome's sphere of influence, while beneath it was Did Carthage. They call it dips? Under no circumstances were the Carthaginians to expand north of that river. But for now, Hamilcar and son were living it up. Well, son. I don't get it. Why, why did uh, Carthage agree to that one? Carthage paid them back. Hamilcar's there being badass, right? Uh, they didn't need to agree on this. Like, oh, come on, like you're, you're reaching now. You can't just claim all of that. Basically, France, Gaul, and all that area, right? I'm surprised, like, they call just dips. Like, you can't go past this. It's like, we, we were trying to suppress you by, like, putting a lot of, you know, pressure on you with money and shit. You paid us back. We didn't expect that. So, I guess now this treaty. Still not going to work, I guess. more years of successful campaigning in Spain. Now, if you'll excuse me, I just have to go fight those guys. See you later, son. I love you. <gasps> Oh what yeah, he died in a river in oh, ambush, crap. right? <laughs> I drowned? Oh well. <laughs> Always remember, son. You are vengeance. Oh my god. Also delete my browsing history. Hamilcar Barca was tragically ambushed at a river and drowned. His son-in-law, and possibly also his lover, no further questions, took charge for a while. But he too was later assassinated, leaving finally mm, at nothing 26 Hannibal has a hand Hannibal in that. In charge of the Carthaginian armies in Spain. Sources say the men readily accepted him as their leader. He <laughs> the chose horse. to suffer the same hardships as his men. He lived in the same yeah. conditions, was often the first into battle and the last one out. And it also helped that he looked a lot like his dad. He had the total respect of his men. If he said jump... Basically, if he was in Dirtably, he would be called a face of company, I guess. There you go. <laughs> Hannibal was great, man. Hannibal was genius when he counted. But to me, it feels like he was never the leader guy. Because he made some critical error where someone like, let's just say, Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Napoleon, people like that wouldn't have made these errors. Right? He wasn't calculated in the large scale where it mattered. He was a great warrior. He was even very cunning and smart where it mattered. Right? And he, he cared for his people. Great. But he didn't have the, you know, like Napoleon level vision, I guess.
see, even like around this and Julius Caesar, uh, Caesar level, uh, you know, genius basically to see things and to make decision where it matters. There's always like two, two, two or four ways. Let's just say, great leader knows which way to you know take every single time. Caesar, Napoleon, they always did that. You know, Hannibal wasn't there. They said how high. If he said tuck me in, they said how tight. If he said talk to a girl without peeing your pants, they said that's impossible. Nobody can do that. An they army that would follow him anywhere <laughs> would be crucial for exacting his vengeance against Rome. Hannibal's army had become a strong and loyal fighting force, elephant. and that was making a certain nation very uncomfortable. Seeing Carthage re-strengthen so quickly was not something Rome had expected. Yet here they were, paying off their debts and expanding their territory. It didn't feel very much like Carthage was under Rome's thumb at all. And Rome wanted to put an end to it. Tensions were strung tighter than your liar's g-string. And all it would take was one incident to trigger all-out war. And in 219 BC, a city in Spain would find itself at the very center yeah, of why that is this fateful not taken incident, Saguntum. Remember that treaty declaring everything south of this river to be Carthage's sphere of influence? Well, Saguntum should therefore obviously be Carthaginian, right? Wrong! Saguntum had actually scored itself an informal alliance with Rome after Rome had helped it with an internal dispute. With Carthaginian encroachment, Saguntum began to fear for its independence, and Rome declared itself Saguntum's protector. But this clearly went against the Ebro River Treaty. So what on earth was Rome doing? Were the Saguntines and the Romans truly just BFFs? <laughs> it's possible. Or was Rome deliberately trying to interfere with Hannibal's Spanish expansion and there maintain a staging post for a future war with Carthage? More likely. And Hannibal certainly viewed this Rome Saguntum alliance as an outrage. Yet another example of Roman arrogance. At first, he left Saguntum alone. But having learnt from his father to hate all things Roman and having inherited his father's dream of bringing Rome to its knees more and more, Hannibal may have begun to see Saguntum as an opportunity. Could this? Controversial alliance be just what devilish little Hannibal needed to kickstart a second war with Rome and restore Carthaginian dominance. It's even possible that Rome were also using Saguntum to goad Hannibal into a fight so they could go and kick him out of Spain. And as the two giants began gearing up for round two, the poor people of Saguntum had no idea that they were about to be crushed in the collision. Hey, yeah. your alliance with Saguntum is an insult, and we won't stand for it. There are friends, Hannibal, and if you lay a finger on them, it'll be an act of war. Yeah, Hannibal, back the hell off. War, eh? I was thinking I might just besiege their city and massacre their people. I hope you do, Hannibal. Find out what happens. Yeah, we hope you do, Hannibal. Wait, what? Maybe I will. Go ahead. Kill them all. Uh, okay then. Fine, fine. Okay, guess I'll do just that. Consul? We look forward to it. Consul? You're gonna protect us though, right, Consul? Consul! Down! Oh, no! There to top it go. all off, when the Saguntine people. Because we all know every time where this small thing is caught between two big ones, they are always fine. No way they're gonna get crossed, right? Made the genius decision of raiding into Carthaginian territory. Enough I mean, was enough it is genius. In an action that was guaranteed. It is genius in a way, like rather than just getting dying the way they probably already know is coming, it's best to attack them, I guess, right? It's like when you're dying, might as well try to take few out with them type of thing. Who knows? T to provoke the Romans into war. Hannibal besieged the city. The siege of Saguntum lasted eight cruel months before Hannibal broke through the city defenses eight and months, turned Saguntum damn. into a killing field. It was oh, yeah. a massacre. What the hell? Tell me I didn't just catch you massacring our friends, the Sugantees. He got well, your face. Consul, if you like the Suguntees so much, perhaps you should suck on these nuts. Oh god, I've seen that coming. Hearing word of the attack on... <laughs> I've seen multiple people say that in my best. Have you been to Sagandis? And just like, wait a minute, that's not a place. But they were basically referring to this. 
<laughs> Second term. That's a great thing. <laughs> Seriously, man, this is so insane, right? Obviously, eight months is like insanely long, but obviously Julius Caesar wasn't a thing yet, right? Uh, around this time, yeah. So the, the, that thing of like starving a city of all resources, I'm pretty sure Caesar started that. So obviously Hannibal would know that, but yeah, he could have done some shit like that. Seguntum, Rome oh wait, wait a minute, yeah, I'm an idiot. It's like, it's at you know, it's near the water, so yeah, they can just like take ships from Rome and back, I guess. In an uproar, and all eyes were now fixated on what would happen next as Rome sent a delegation to Carthage, led by one of the most highly esteemed Roman senators, Fabius. Maximus, he demanded an answer for Hannibal's sins. He's gonna oh, be completely right. diplomatic. Listen up, scum. You've got a rogue general in Spain attacking a Roman ally. What are we supposed to do about it? Well, there shouldn't have even been a Roman ally in Spain. You're the aggressor here. Hand Hannibal over to us as a criminal so we can punish him severely. No, yes, no, yes. no, severely. I hold in the folds of my toga both peace and war. Which one should I let drop? He said that. Whichever one you want, then I choose. Yeah! The Second Punic War had begun. Pack it up, boys. It must be so awesome to be Roman, right? Level of flexing they're doing all the time. That toga thing is actually, he said that, like, damn. We've got him. We already destroyed these clowns once, and we were the underdogs. Now, we're the overdogs? Hot dogs. Exactly. This is gonna be E Z. Here's the plan. Consul Longus, you take your army and sail straight for Carthage. Burn that city to the ground. And Consul Scipio, you just head on oh, over to Iberia and make Scipio. sure this Hannibal guy doesn't do anything crazy. I mean, what's he gonna do? Cross the Alps? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to what? Cross the Alps. We're going to what? I just told you. Hannibal will freeze to death. Trust me, Jerome. The Romans are expecting us to fight the same way we did last time. Yeah. Passively, taking no initiative. They think it's going to be E, Z. So this time, we have to be aggressive. We have to go on the... It's not just about uh, being aggressive. It's like... Attacking through naval way, right? That's never going to work, right? I mean, last time they clearly showed that. Like, they, they didn't know shit about it, right? And they still kicked ass. So repeating that is just insanity. So I guess his thought was, you know what? I'm just going to go through ground and land and try to attack that. But that's like going through Alps, which did have... He lost, what, 80% of his army? That was insanity. The attack. It sickens me to say this, but this time... We have to be a little more Roman. <gasps> you mean we're going to take poops and baths together? But I'm insecure about my hairy legs. No, I'm saying this time we're going to take the fight to them. Think about it. Rome thinks they're simply going to invade us and win the war. So when they suddenly find themselves being invaded from the north, they'll freak out. Like Tony's mother when the buffet runs out of shrimp. Hey, I got to admit, it's actually kind of genius. And my hairy legs will insulate me from the cold. That's the spirit. Hannibal, you have my sword and my spear and my legs. Ugh. <laughs> Hannibal's plan, a daring alpine trek to surprise the Romans, was a bold but risky strategy. That's just a wall if of it paid off, that's, that's he could all that catch is. the Romans with their pants down. <laughs> But he could also end up losing a ton of men and supplies in the hostile mountain conditions. Nevertheless, in 218 BC, with a fire in his eyes and some vengeance in his belly, mm. Hannibal brought his force of almost 100,000 men across the Ebro River. They spent months on the road trekking through... 100,000 at that time. That's an insane number. At that time, 100,000 is a big-ass number. So, yeah, what is... I think it's going to... What, 10, 20,000 is going to left? the cold hostile mountain conditions and when they finally reached the other side they said hooray we did it we crossed the alps what no those were the pyrenees those are the alps <laughs> i was about to say like how the f did that oh, there you go. after crossing the pyrenees the army then had to pass through southern gaul a vast territory filled with tribes people many of whom were hostile to hannibal's presence his journey to the Alps was an ordeal in itself. 
as he was forced to fight his way through and incurred pretty hefty losses before even reaching the mountains. Mm. His plan was almost stopped in its tracks entirely as the Roman consul Scipio, on his way to Iberia, discovered Hannibal was right on his doorstep. Here Suddenly, comes. Hannibal's journey became a race as he rushed to get his massive army across the vast Rhone River before the Romans could intercept him. The crossing was chaotic, with the panicking elephants causing several men to drown. And the first combat of the war occurred when small scouting parties from each side encountered one another. When Scipio finally caught up to Hannibal's position, what he found was an empty Carthaginian camp. Hannibal had slipped through his fingers. Hey. The Roman consul Scipio felt the weight of the situation. Quite unbelievably, Hannibal was going to cross the Alps into Italy, and the Romans had no idea where he would emerge. For the first time, a Carthaginian force had the... I like how Hannibal's like, we're not engaging Scipio here. We are like, we are just like lagging to Alps, right? Scipio was so badass during the Punic Wars, right? Like it's like an insane name. Hannibal and Scipio is like two biggest names of the Punic Wars. Roman homeland under threat. Scipio sent his men onto Iberia as planned, but he himself rushed home to raise a new army so that if Hannibal survived the crossing, Scipio would be there, waiting. Would you look at that, boys? We're here, the Alps. Although it is a little later than I expected. Yeah, it's kind of chilly. We'll set up camp here and wait for spring, right? It's way too cold, right? Nope. Hannibal? I mean, uh, now he can't stop. Hannibal's Skip, you know, crossing of the Alps. Right. Was... This this isn't is not that bad, even though like how it turned out. But Scipio knows it already has begun. Like if he waits now, it more time Scipio can raise even bigger army. So basically, he has like time is a factor now. It's brutal. It was already autumn, and the men suffered terribly. It was cold. Men would fall off the sides of icy cliffs. Whoa. They starved. They fell off the sides of icy cliffs. Some sources say they had to eat their pack animals and would finish off dying comrades in order to take their clothes for extra warmth. And then they would fall off the sides of icy cliffs. Imagine an army of 50,000 men with all of their horses, supplies, and 37 elephants trying to navigate the most hostile mountain range. The elephant thing is insane. Like, how did you thought like we we're gonna cross Alps with elephants? Like, basically all of the elephants died, right? That's insane in Europe. And it wasn't just nature that they were up against. Tribes people lived in the mountains, and they couldn't believe what they were seeing. A tribe approached Hannibal and said, Hey man, geez, that's some nice armor. What is that, gold? Man, I'd really like that armor. Hey boss, they've got food as well. Shut up, be cool. Hey, why don't you let us guide you through this narrow gorge? We're not gonna kill you or nothing. Just walk right on through there. We're not gonna kill you. It's just right this way. We're not gonna kill you. Hannibal's army were forced to fight their way through the gorge as massive boulders rained down on them from above. Some clever reorganization of his line helped them survive and they were able to fend off the opportunistic tribes. But losses from the constant attacks were heavy. As the journey continued, men who went over the sides would get stuck on the ice sheets below and had to make a grisly choice between starving to death or just getting it over with. When the deeply demoralized army reached the summit that and rested for a couple insane. days, Hannibal tried to lift their spirits with a rousing speech. Look, men, down there, it's Rome. These plains stretching out in front of you are bountiful with food to eat and Romans oh, to no. kill. Move, Bessie. Look, you have just climbed the walls of Rome. The hard part is over. From here on out, it's all downhill, and nobody else will die. Except for them. The rest of us here, no one dies. Starting now. Like I said, the one thing is so awesome, it's like somehow elephants didn't resist going to the Alps. Like elephants don't like that. So they trained them so good, they just followed them. Okay. Let's go. Oh, for goodness right. sake! As it turned out, the descent was as deadly as the way up, with the I mean, cold really starting to set in. The path became even more... Anybody climbed anything would know that, like, climbing, even though hard, is kind of easier to come down, I guess. 
narrow. <laughs> and at one point, the men spent three days in the freezing cold, What's repairing the, the collapsed road. <laughs> when they finally reached the bottom, Hannibal said, Look, guys, we did it. Oh. Well, I thought it went really well. When Hannibal left Spain, he had about 100,000 men. By the time he reached the Italian plains, his numbers had dwindled to about 26,000. He was now caught in enemy territory without a supply line or source 75 of reinforcements. Gone. 74%. And any elephants who had survived to this point were almost certainly traumatized. So what on earth was Hannibal up to? This supposed military genius had just led a starving and weakened army right into enemy territory. Any modern general who lost half their men to mountains would be immediately fired and possibly even depensed on live TV. Here's the thing. While Hannibal may not have planned on losing quite so many men, he had almost certainly expected considerable losses, and he always had a plan for how to replace them. Need men? Northern Italy was full of men. Big, burly Celtic men. All the men Hannibal would ever need to beat off Rome. These Celts were filled I mean, it's not going to be same as your trained men under your wing. Sure, like it's better than nothing. How are you going to beat Rome with people you don't know, basically you've never trained with and you don't know how good they are? With resentment, having only recently been conquered by Rome, <laughs> Hannibal hoped to be seen as a liberator, convince the Celts to cut ties with Rome, and instead join him in crushing Rome. That way, he could gain a source of reinforcements and supplies right in Rome's backyard. But sir, in order to win the loyalty of the Celts, we would need to make a seriously favorable Kill impression on them. How do we get them to like us? Kill them. Hmm. Kill them. <laughs> One of yeah. Hannibal's first actions was, in Italy was to obliterate a nearby tribe who wouldn't join him. This sent a clear message to all the other tribes. It was his wrath they should fear, not Rome's. The realization that a Carthaginian army had just invaded them. I mean, look, man, he could have like appealed to those people like I'm a liberator this and that speech, but that would have been like weaker c compared to the fear, let's just say. With fear, anybody who's under him will stay just like see him as a strong leader and will stay under him as a strong military army right so if they just appear there's always going to be power struggle this and that all the bullshit that follows with it so i guess this is a good way of doing it like showing force is the way to make sure everybody stays in line i guess who knows must have been shocking for the romans <laughs> but when they looked at this ragtag group broken by the alps <laughs> they couldn't have felt very intimidated however hannibal was now in italy and he was about to embark on one of the most astonishing military campaigns in all of human history. The Romans may not have known it yet, but there was now a monster loose in their territory, and he was vying for Roman blood. There you go. <laughs> part one. Yeah, part two is out already, right? Yeah, this is with us around the same time. Yeah, this is so insane. Like, the part two is going to be even more insane. I still, like, can't get past, like, Hannibal got an infection. I just, like, cut it off and just, like, move on. What the fuck? And by the end, certain things he, he did, I'm like, was he losing his mind? I don't know. So, yeah, part two is going to be awesome. <laughs> He's going to make a you know, third Punic War video as well, the salting thing. Uh, obviously, the salting thing is not really accurate or people don't know if it's like really their exaggerated thing. But, yeah, that is a salt. I guess, like, Roman's like, enough of this shit. It's like three wars, like we have to sort this and make sure like Carthage is no longer a thing type of way. I don't know. I think that's exaggerated. But well, that was the uh, second Punic War part one. I'll do part two soon as well, I guess. Uh, if you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.